Good morning. Uh, welcome to the second lecture in the Dr. TLA Plus series. And today we're going to have Fu Jing talking about Raft, which is a much anticipated topic here. Right? So uh, before introducing Jing, I'd just like to give a quick update about uh, the series itself. So last month, we had a first lecture given by Andrew on Paxis. It's a very well attended one. So we had over 200 people joining in the conference room and live and a lot of on-demand watchings afterwards. So uh, basically, among all the talks Microsoft Research hosted in the past 30 days, Andrew's talk was the fourth uh, most popular one. Uh, but in case you missed it, so we now have a GitHub page uh, for all the schedules as well as the links. Right? You can just go to GitHub and search Dr. TLA Plus series, and then you'll be able to see the, the schedule. Uh, the links uh, to the talk which has happened. So today we're going to have Jing talk about Raft. And after that, we'll have Murat to talk about uh, clocks. And then myself will talk about uh, uh, Fast Paxas and uh, Rustin, who's sitting in the audience, uh, give a talk about the global snapshot. And then Chris will talk about the serializable snapshot isolations. Definitely uh, keep up with all the good materials. OK, so, um, so today it's a great pleasure to have Jing. Uh, give us a lecture about Raft. So, for a, a quick question is for all the audience here, how many of us attended the Paxos talk last time? Okay, uh, about uh, one third of them <laughs> attended. So, so basically, Raft uh, at a very high level achieves the same purpose as what Paxos does, but in a slightly different way. So, it'd be very interesting to learn how that mechanism works. Right? Okay, and then about Jing. So Jing has been a research manager in Microsoft Research and had a very successful career in Microsoft. So basically, Jing and his team invented a lot of new technologies, which basically impacted every major line of Microsoft products, right? Name it uh, Windows, Office, Bing, Azure, and uh, Xbox, and uh, creating huge commercial values. So, okay, so without further ado, Let's hear a thing about Hexus. Well, our group's work has a lot of team members' contribution, including Chen. Uh, it's my great pleasure to talk about uh, Raft today. And uh, um, here's the outline of the talk. I will first give a basic introduction of Raft, what it implements, the concept it done is uh, it achieves a replicated log for replicate state machines. If you look at Raft website, currently it boosts 71 implementations with different language like C, C Sharp, C++, Erlang, F Sharp, Java, JavaScript, PHP, Python, Ruby, Scala, almost every major language now they used. And the uh, Raft algorithm com in comparison is relatively accessible and easily understood. And there, uh, I think that's the reason of such a wide variety of implementations in there. We will study the basic of the Raft algorithm, how it works, and uh, what's the safety and consistency guarantee Raft give to the users, and uh, talk about how Raft handle configuration changes. Uh, during the talk, if you have any questions, feel free to raise it uh, between, uh, uh, during the presentation. Okay, so for those of you who have uh, uh, taken the Paxos lecture, here is a brief uh, description of the common things and the different things of Rust, Raft versus Paxos. Uh, so Paxos implemented consensus algorithm, and um, a, a group of nodes will reach a, a agree upon a state in the process. Raft. Uh, further implement uh, a replicate log for replicate state machine, which is more commonly used in distributed implementations. Uh, Raft use uh, 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 during the operation a leader election. So during the operation of the Raft, you will find it will first elect a leader node and then continue normal operations. Uh, in Paxos, Leader is an optional optimizations. Although, um, I mean, for a good performance, many uh, implementations of Paxos 
actually uh, uh, will implement the leader operation. Um, in Raft, the leader's log will be replicated to all other followers, while Paxos may not necessarily uh, do that, and uh, uh, its log may have holes in it. Um, Raft spec is more closer to developers' implementation. So if you look at the Raft spec, you can almost follow it and implement, uh, uh, give your own implementation. Uh, in comparison, Paxos spec is more abstract. Now, there are certainly uh, uh, advantage and uh, disadvantage. Advantage is the Raft spec leads to more easier implementation by a developer. Um, and the uh, disadvantage is the state of the Raft is relatively large, so it's more difficult to do model checking on the Raft, while Paxos being more abstract has a much more smaller state space and more easy uh, to uh, validate. Now, this slide gives what's the uh, conceptual uh, functionality of Raft. So uh, in the Raft, you have a cluster of servers, okay? And then uh, you have a set of client, which may or uh, uh, maybe, uh, let's say, a, a set of web front end or can be just node in the server cluster, which is sending command to the Raft cluster. Now, as I said earlier, during normal operation, Raft will elect a leader. And the, these clients will communicate those commands to the leaders. The command will be committed into the cluster. Once the command has been committed and the act to the client, it will always be present in all future clusters uh, uh, leader. So you will not lose this committed command. This is a guarantee. Raft give it to you, even with all failures, which can happen, meaning the constituent node in the Raft cluster can uh, uh, basically fail, reboot. You can add node, remove node from the cluster. Um, the node among selves may uh, basically experience difficulty in network communication. You can have packet lost, packet replicated, uh, packet reordered. Even with all of those, if a command is committed, you won't lose it. That's the guarantee given by a route. You do want to realize that uh, although it says committed command will always present, it's possible that some of the command that you communicate to the Raft cluster, it's uncommitted or it's in the process of committing, you haven't received acknowledgement yet, but they still may present in the commitment log. These possibilities need to be handled by the client orders. Raft cannot deal with those. So you may be uh, aware of this, and uh, when you design and use your algorithm, take consideration into that, okay? These uh, things is difficult to handle simply because in any cluster-based algorithm, it is possible you send a command in, the command already committed into the cluster, but right before the acknowledgement sent back to the client, well, the node you deal with crash. So you have uncommitted command, but the command is already committed into the cluster you will have to deal with situation no matter what algorithm you deal with. This slide shows the basic operation timeline of Raft. So Raft will divide its operation stage into multiple terms. In each term, it will start with the leader election process. During the leader election stage, one server among all the servers in the rafter will be elected as a leader. And there will be a single server, no matter how many servers in the rafter cluster you build. Okay? Now, once this server is elected as a leader, it will uh, preside over the rest of its terms. Okay? The client will always send the request 
to that server. And if other followers receive a client request, it will simply refer that to the server. The server is responsible to do operations, to commit this command into the cluster, and acknowledge back to the client. It's a single point of contact. Um, in the follows, let me describe a basic operation, a rather uh, uh, pretty, uh, uh, basically, optimistic, nice scenario of Raft and see how Raft operates. Uh, in the later part of the lecture, I will talk about more nasty scenarios. So in this nice scenario, you first boot up the server cluster. And there, uh, for simplicity, we only have three servers, S1, S2, and S3. When the cluster is initialized, they start as followers. Okay, And the, in the raft, the server can be in one of three states, a follower, a leader, or a candidate. Okay. So one of the servers find it never receive any communications. It timed out and become a candidate. This we say it starts an election. Okay. And to start this election, what happens is this server will bump up its current term by one. So you see S1. The term becomes two, and its state becomes a candidate. Okay. It will then send a request to vote for the server S1 to all other servers in the cluster. In the same time, it actually will send a request to itself to vote for itself. Okay. Now, in these nine situations, Server S2 and S3 is the one uh, uh, receive this request, and that time uh, they haven't timed out yet. So they get this vote request. They acknowledge S1 to be the leader, and they change to the follower state. So they won't start another election by themselves. Okay, and the S1 when it receives the majority vote from the uh, servers in the cluster, it become the leader for that term. So in this particular case, uh, all servers vote S1 to be the leader. S1 become the leader for the entire term. Okay, then operation can switch to normal operations. In the normal operations, client send command to S1. This command can be any operations which change the state of a server. For example, you can uh, basically say, OK, I want to put keys into a key value store. I want to update the keys in a key value store. These are all state changing operations. For um, uh, 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 abstraction, we just mentioned this command as A, B, and C, just saying, OK, they are different commands. OK, so all this command has been sent to the leader. The leader will write those commands in its log. Okay? And then it will start the process to asynchronously replicate these logs to the other uh, followers in the clusters. Okay? Yes. You mean this one? Yeah. Um, okay. So if S1 is having a problem with its NIC, so it can't receive traffic, uh, it's going to just constantly be timing out and requesting a vote and getting elected leader, but it's not going to be able to do anything. So how does Raft defend against that? So there's, uh, you are basically asking some nasty situations when S1 doesn't work. Yeah. Um, uh, there will be a lot of those. And uh, maybe allow me to defer this a little bit, because I will discuss a fairly nasty situations, and uh, let's continue this nice situation so people get a feel of how this sure. operates first. Yes, Siddhita. Uh, so what I'm seeing here is the primary backup form of replication. So it has been industry practice for a decade or more. So I would like to understand 
is RAT formalizing it or what are the differences from what is the practice? So you can say raft, uh, rather describe all these operations in a pretty clean way. So this is one consensus algorithm you can easily design and implement. Um, there's indeed a lot of uh, uh, algorithms before but, So if you, if you call it an algorithm versus a formalization, what is new in this algorithm versus the current practice or previous algorithms? That's my, my question. If there is nothing new, I would interpret it as a formalization. I mean, uh, RAFTA is a system algorithm and a system proposal. It's, um, I think if you look in details, many of its components may already exist previously. It may be a nice way to put everything together and putting an implementation which is pretty simple to uh, describe, putting a consensus algorithm, pretty simple to describe and easily replicate it and implement it by others. I think that's the value it presents. In a sense, it presents a, a relatively easy to implement consensus algorithm that can be used in quite a lot of distributed scenarios. So it's a consensus in a way that when primary fail, it does not rely on external mechanism to switch primaries, right? It does its own primary, new primary thing itself. I mean, yes, so but this question is there has been many implementations which look, or maybe it does, hmm. the pretty much same thing what Rav proposes. I think mm -hmm. basically... So that's why his question is, is more like a formal presentation of the whole logic. I mean, for example, Chavi existed for a long time. We had something called as RSL yes. in Microsoft yes. like almost seven or eight years, yeah. which is some way or other yeah. is an implementation of yeah. you know consensus and replicated stuff. Yeah. I think it's, it achieves the same purpose, but it does have some new ideas in there, you see. Okay. Yeah. Allow me to uh, basically go ahead. Okay, uh, uh, so this is uh, uh, um, basically continuous operation of the raft algorithm. Um, the leader replicate its log entries asynchronously to other follower node, and uh, uh, basically uh, uh, the followers receive these entries, commit themselves, uh, commit those entries into its local storage, and uh, uh, acknowledge the addition of the entries back to the leader. So, Once an entry, yep. Yeah. So the numbers above the operations, the one, two, three, So the, there, each of the entry here have two numbers. Um, the central number is the term that uh, uh, operation is uh, committed. So uh, in this case, all the term is two. <coughs> the upper number is the index which is monotonically increasing, okay, for each of the log. So in this case, we see uh, uh, four command has been committed, A, B, C, and D, where the index of each of the uh, command is uh, uh, basically show above. And there, um, as we said, if a command has been committed to a majority of the node in the cluster, in this case, two of the three nodes, it's considered committed in the entire cluster. So the commit index of this cluster increased to four. Okay. Now we can start to talk about some of the more nasty scenarios and talk about uh, uh, basically safety and uh, uh, things, what are the detailed things Raft have done to uh, guarantee, for example, election safety, log replication safety, etc. Um, the generally implementing a consensus algorithm or design a distributed uh, uh, consensus algorithm is tricky. The main thing is that you want to make sure under complicated real world failure scenarios that your algorithm still present a correct result to the user. And for the raft case, the failure scenario it deals with is any of the server can fail, crash, and restart. Network packet can be delayed, replicated, and reordered. Okay, use under all these happening in any of the combinations, 
you want to make sure the uh, guarantee you presented to the user is correct. Okay. To ensure safety, Raft outline a number of uh, uh, different guarantees, and this is actually the five guarantees Raft written in its paper. Um, two of the key guarantee is election safety. You guarantee there's only one server per turn that can be a leader. And the uh, um, leader's log is complete, means if a log entry is committed to a leader, that log entry will always appear in the log of leaders of all future uh, generations. Okay. <clears throat> and the log of any of the two servers in the raft cluster will uh, have a match property in that if two log consist of one entry with the same index and term, then all preceding entries will be the same. Okay. Uh, log leaders only append uh, entries, never override or delete entries. Follower can override and delete their entries. And uh, uh, these all measures above guarantee uh, that if the log entry is applied to a state log, a, a state machine, after it's committed, this state machine will be operating uh, the same across all different servers. Yes. When in the process of becoming a leader, does might he overwrite the entries? So the question is about uh, leader entries. How uh, uh, when it become a leader, uh, where it uh, basically have its entry. I mean, how to handle its entry? You will see in the leader election stage, there's a rule saying only a node with more recent log can be elected as a leader. Yeah, that property makes sure all committed log in the cluster is present in the new leader's log. Okay. So I mean, as uh, uh, basically uh, some of people in the room knows, uh, basically designing distributed algorithm, you need to be de designed carefully. And such consideration is, for example, one example of careful considerations you want to craft to make sure your algorithm is correct. <clears throat> so let's uh, uh, examine the uh, uh, election process in Raft uh, a little bit more in details. Raft use a current term variable for each of the server. And that variable will need to be persisted, meaning every time the variable changes, it needs to be saved flush to disk. And uh, it's assuming this variable will survive a crash and reboot to guarantee the uh, safety property of the cluster. We actually, uh, later in the TIA plus uh, sessions, we will show that if the current term is not persisted, you will see uh, this, the cluster will operate incorrectly. And it can have more than one leader in the election. OK. Now, uh, this current term is an important variable, persisted. And when a server of Raft times out, start a new election, it will increase this current term, change to candidate state, vote for itself, and request vote for all other servers. The rule of a uh, 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 server granting the vote to the other sender to become the leader is that the sender's term need to be larger or equal to the receiver's term. And uh, the log of the servers need to be uh, newer than the, uh, uh, the log of the sender need to be newer than the log of the receiver. The Raft server only grants vote to one leader per turn. And a server can only become a leader after a majority of the server vote for itself. That makes sure you only have one server as a leader per turn, because there's no two servers can garner a majority of the vote. Now, this term value 
is included in every RPC call in the raft. So uh, when a, a receiver receives a RPC call, if it finds sender's term is older, that RPC call will be rejected. And uh, a reply uh, from the receiver to the sender will update the sender's term and change the sender to follower. Now, if the receiver finds its term to be older, it will update its term and in the process, change itself to follower, whatever its previous state is. Okay. Leader in the loft operations always send heartbeat to assert its leadership. Okay. If you have leader receive client request or have log to replicate, these heartbeat messages are simple operational append entry messages and uh, they just serve as heartbeat. Otherwise, if the leader has nothing to replicate, it will send uh, uh, append entry request periodically to make sure it stays as a leader. And the, all followers in the uh, raft algorithm expect to receive RPC call from the leader. And uh, if it doesn't receive RPC call for a certain period of time, it will start a new election and the timeout rule of the raft says a server will timeout with a value randomly chosen between t and 2t, with t being larger than the network communication time between the server. So this rule try to make sure if, uh, uh, if there are multiple servers in the cluster, eventually you have one server win the election to be the leader. And when the server starts or reboot, it always starts as the follower. Okay. Now we can start to examine some of the more complicated case, a uh, 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 more failure-prone case of raft, and see how it um, uh, deal with uh, the situations. Um, <coughs> I think Jay previously asked a leader question, right? I mean, uh, can you? Do you mind the re yeah the necro the one about the uh, the one about the filling necro the one about the uh, about updating during okay so Jay's question the, the is first about question basically about lightness, yeah, so yeah. It's irrelevant for this the, your question is about let's say if a server okay uh, Nick fails what happens to it, it okay. I, I was asking about it being unable to receive but able to send but that's a liveness problem not a safety problem. So if it, I mean, uh, doesn't receive anything, okay, after a while it thinks the whole uh, world times out, it will start an election, meaning it bumps its term, send vote request to others. Now if the outbound NIC is okay, this request actually will reach others. It will basically force other uh, nodes to become followers, okay, and uh, 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 Basically, uh, then these nodes will try to send a response back to the servers. Okay. Now, um, if the incoming part of the NIC actually is bad, the server will not hear the uh, basically vote request. And if that happens, you actually have equivalent of spammer, which will block the entire operation of the clusters. Okay. Uh, I, I think normally, usually the NIC actually is bad in both ways. Right, okay. If it's bad in both ways, it just, it's basically like an isolated crash. Um, yeah, so ba basically you can exam all complicated scenarios, and I will exam some of the complicated scenario here. Uh, the good thing is, I think the correctness is still guaranteed. Okay. You can have bad things. Wouldn't eventually this uh, deaf uh, server would, like it's, it's, wouldn't its uh, term fall behind everyone else, and then everyone else would say, ignore subsequent collection requests? Look at the current algorithm, uh, at least given by a raft implementation. If a server is deaf, meaning it can send but doesn't receive, the term of that server actually will always increase, mm -hmm. right. simply because it will always time out. And every time it times out, it bumps its turn by one. Okay, and uh, that 
actually uh, will try to start the election always and will disrupt the entire operation of the cluster. What well, is the second problem? Although yeah. I, I think that scenario uh, probably I never see it in actual operations. So so I, I actually, well, I, I've seen death servers. So okay. That's the fact. Uh, one question which I have is because you touched upon the the guy who's, who believes that the uh, leader needs to be elected, right? So he implements his term and starts the election. Now consider the case that guy is actually in an isolation because of mental partition, right? Now the remaining, let's say it's a five case. So four guys are in a majority, they can talk to each other, they will do a new election and their number becomes three. This guy is in isolation, right? So his number will become three, he tries the election, fails, time out, becomes four, five, six, some number n, and when everything comes back, now his number is n, and these guys are probably still at three. So how does the reconcile happen? Here's the reconcile. How the reconcile will happen in this case. So in this, that case, you particularly did. I mean, uh, uh, basically describe. So imagine here. I mean, four of the servers have normal operation. They have a long log, but their term is three, and the leader is uh, basically on an isolated network continuously timeout and the term grows to something like 100. Okay. Once the two networks connected, the first thing is the, uh, the, the basically that old guy will try to uh, send this higher term, meaning 100, uh, basic term 100 request vote event to every of the servers. Now it will find that the, its log is older than all other nodes, so it cannot win, okay? And every other guys will learn about this new term with 100, okay? But they are just receiving the request vote request. So uh, basically, they don't win in that term either. But after this one round, everyone knows, okay, the highest term on the cluster is 100. And then a second election will start at turn 101. At that time, one of the nodes will win. And that node will guarantee to be uh, one of the nodes with a longer or more updated log. I actually have one slide showing that. Sorry, I think in the case of the death leader, as yeah. long as an election ever starts, you're probably fine, right? Because of the randomized timeouts. So as long as somebody starts an election, then everybody receives request votes, like they fail to elect the, this new leader probably, right? And then uh, and then because of the randomized timeouts, somebody else will end up getting elected. The issue is that an election will never start because the, the leader is sending heartbeats, so the, the followers aren't gonna time out on those. So you would want to, and but it's, since it's always safe to start a leader election, right? You would wanna have a leader, if it hasn't received an appendentary reply in a while, start to start an election, and then you're fine. Yeah. We, we can look at some of the more complicated scenarios below. So in this case, uh, I described, let's say, I mean, uh, here's normal operations. Okay, we have five nodes in this case. Server one, uh, S1 is the leader, and uh, um, two command has been committed to the entire cluster, and uh, everyone uh, had these uh, command log replicated. Now let's assume S1 and S2 crashes, okay? And uh, among the rest of the three nodes, uh, server S4 become the leader, okay? It received two requests, C and D, okay? It successfully replicated the request to S5, but it doesn't replicate the request to S3, okay? Now, in this particular case, since the command is only committed to two of the five nodes in the cluster, the command is considered not committed. So the, you see the committed index of the entire cluster is still one and two. And in the future, if we basically look beyond, it's actually possible for these two commands to be deleted. Simply they are not committed into the cluster yet. Um, say uh, bad things happen, this S3 node crashes, okay? And the uh, S1 somehow wakes up, okay? And uh, another round of election starts, and uh, with S5 rounded to be the leader, okay? 
S5 will continue to receive client request and append the request on its own log. So in this case, S5 uh, log has C and D, and then you have, uh, uh, that should be EFG for uh, command 5, 6, and 7 on there. Okay, It will try to replicate its log, its version of the log, to all the followers. Okay, Let's assume that network is really bad at this case. So um, S4 and S1 somehow doesn't receive any of the replicate command request. And then S5 crashes and the S4 crashes. We have three nodes, S1, S3, S2, S3 survive. Okay. Uh, by the way, if uh, on the entire cluster we have all, only two nodes survive, the algorithm actually cannot make progress. Simply because uh, you don't have a majority, so no one can be a leader and you were just stuck in there, okay. but that's okay. Now in this uh, rest of the case, S3 becomes a leader. Okay, it receives two command, G and H. It successfully replicate G to its two follower, S1 and S2. Okay, H hasn't been replicated yet. So notice command G has been successfully replicated to three of the five nodes in the cluster. Okay, so it's committed in the cluster. Okay. And there, um, then things become bad again. Okay, S1 becomes a leader. Okay, it receives additional command I, J, and K. Okay. And uh, it has two followers, SN, S, S2 and F5. It successfully uh, committed the command, uh, 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 replicated the command I to S2, but S5, it fails to basically communicate everything. Okay, so these are things happen. Now let me ask, at this point, say we start a new election. Who can be the leader in the other round? Okay, I will show some of the case, but let's look at this particular uh, cases. Say all of the nodes are alive, okay, in uh, round seven, and somehow they start a new election. Who do you think can be the leader? Any? Want to? You think S5 can be the leader? Yeah. <laughs> so record the property, okay? Yeah. The committed <laughs> law, the committed law right. need to be sure to be in the leader's log, right? If S5 becomes the leader and it continues the operation, it will overwrite yeah. that log, right? I mean, so that's bad. You don't want it to ever happen. Okay. Now here is the uh, uh, things. Okay. In this case, uh, I assume S1 crashes. Otherwise, um, S1 actually can still be the leader. Uh, but uh, the actual reality is since S1 is the leader of turn six, it actually will not become leader of turn seven. It will either be always still be the leader of turn six or um, I mean basically someone else will disrupt it. It will not be uh, a node will not be a leader in two uh, consecutive terms. Um, S2 can qualify be the leader. Okay. In this case S3 and 4 will not be the leader on this particular term because in this uh, particular case, their learned term, four and five, is older than this. So when they bump up the term, they bump up the term to six. When they send the request vote to, basically to others, okay, they will not grant its vote. Simply they already add that term, okay? Could S3 be 
wonder if it could only communicate with S4 and S5? Huh? Could, could S3 be leader if it could only communicate with S4 and S5? Okay. Because it could collect... Let's see, okay. S3, S3, right? Now, S6 will not ground it, simply oh. because it's already at turn 6. So you, you will never get majority vote, okay? And that's the key, okay? Now, S5 can't be the leader, okay? The main reason is when you send out to vote, you actually send out these two numbers, which is the index and the last term of the final entry of your log. When this send out to the other guys, okay, so these two guys will say, okay, my log is already at turn six, okay? And this six is larger than four. So your log is up outdated by my log, and they will not grant it. I the become the leader because he has the, the, the right committed log and yeah. the latest master information. Yeah. Wait, I'm confused. You, you say S3, S4, and S5 can't be the leader, right? Because you don't have the term 6 information. Now, 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 now here is this, okay? They cannot be the leader because they don't have the turn 6 information. Yeah, but but like turn it. can be learned. So that's the uh, 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 thing. But there is one more possibility where there might be a hole in the term where you actually implement the term. And because of a leader election collision, nobody became master because there was a split board. And you actually have to do the new board. So it might be possible that there is a hole where there was a term where nothing was committed and things yeah. moved on. So, so here is this. Term is easy to learn, right? It's just one number. Recall that. Log is more difficult to repair. So that's uh, basically a uh, uh, thing here. So for example, let's say S1 and S2 both crashes, okay? You have these uh, three nodes surviving. Now at turn seven, actually nobody can win election, okay? Simply because this guy, although it learns the newest term, it doesn't have the most recent log, okay? And uh, this guy has the latest log, but it doesn't have the highest turn. So S3 can become leader at turn seven? At turn seven. It, it yeah. won't immediately become leader at turn it seven? It won't be able to become. So yeah. basically, it's a starter leader, but it will, I mean, uh, uh, it will not be granted the vote. Sorry, in the scenario where, so it, it times out, it increments its term, it sends out requests for votes, it gets a vote from S4, it doesn't get a vote from S5, because S5 just drops it on the floor because yep. it's outdated. If S3 then times out again, which it could win the race to time yep. out, that's, it, it will then bump its turn to seven. That's indeed. So it actually will win the vote at term eight or higher terms. It could also win the vote at term seven if it times out in the right uh, way. Every time you time out, you bump your term yep. by one. So the first time you bump it from five to six, and the second time you bump it from six to seven. Yeah, six, seven. Or if you learn a new term, okay, so for example, in the last term here, when uh, uh, S3 send a uh, vote request to S5, uh, in the replies, S3 will learn, okay, the terms already increased to six. And the next time, it will start uh, election on a newer term, which is term eight. Okay, so it can basically win the election on term eight. So this complicated process makes it sure two things. One is one server always win the election. Second, the server that wins the election always have a newer version of the log. Or that log at least consists of all the committed log entries in the cluster. We call a committed uh, uh, entry that's committed need to uh, basically uh, uh, commit it to at least a majority of the server, right? And the all log appended later will either have a higher term or higher index. So when you be granted a vote by the majority of the servers in the cluster, 
okay, you can be make sure this leader will have the committed log in its log uh, uh, entries. So this makes sure committed log doesn't get lost in the cluster. Okay. These are the uh, uh, safety rules if written down in English. I think we already exam how it works in the uh, preceding graph. Okay. Now once a node becomes a leader, then its log becomes a new truth. And it will start the process of replicating this log to all every other node in the cluster. Okay? As I said er uh, earlier, it can start to receive client requests. And simply uh, just put it in its current log. Then asynchronously, it will send request to all other nodes. So let's look at the case of S2 and S5. And record earlier, S5 has a pretty long log, okay? But S2 has the more recent log. So what happens in the beginning, S2 will send this single log entry. It thinks, I mean, it's, it doesn't know the other node doesn't know that much entries. So it will just send the latest entry J, but will say, okay, the entry before that is index four and turn six. Okay, this information is sent to the other server, in this case, follow S5. And now S5 will check its index position, that's four, and the term, now it finds the term is three. Okay, so these are different from the entry being sent by the leader. And that means the follower will reject this append entry request, saying, okay, uh, my log isn't updated to that point, give me more information. So the leader will send them more information, it will give you the preceding entry, four, six, and the, uh, says the early entry is at index three, and now the term is five. This is again not uh, uh, updated, so that request will be rejected by the follower again. Now, then the uh, leader get back even one step, sending this entry three and the, uh, with turn five. Now, and the preceding entry is at index position two with term two. This information matches that of the uh, uh, followers. And recall earlier, we said that uh, uh, basically raft algorithm makes sure that if two entries match here, all preceding entries match in the cluster. Just make sure all the cluster, basically log entries beyond this point is the same among two servers. Then this entry can be just replicated. And the follower's log is completely replicated by that of the server. So uh, notice this process, and also that means when you uh, do that, all the command already sent to, originally sent to server S5 get removed. So that's why I basically previous says, if a command is not committed in the cluster, it can be just being removed. But that's okay. Okay? Now let's uh, examine a little bit about the client protocol of the raft. For client operations, okay, uh, the client will always send a command to the leader. If the leader is unknown, it can contact any servers, and if those servers know a leader exists, it will redirect the command to the leader. The leader will not act on the completion of this command until this command has been uh, uh, logged, committed, by a majority of the servers in the uh, cluster, okay? Um, if a request times out, or for example, leader crashes, client can reissue this command to some other servers. Now, uh, Raft itself may not know, okay, if the command has been repeatedly reissued. If your state machine 
have issues of uh, uh, basically have two commands executed uh, multiple times. For example, some command like updating a key, you cannot just uh, execute multiple times. Uh, it's the client's responsibility to design the protocol to deal with these situations. So one possibility is embedding a unique ID in the command to detect whether the command is duplicated. But these are considered specific opti optimizations, simply because depending on um, uh, uh, the command, you may care or may not care these. For example, if it's a, a, a just set key command in a key value store, that command can be executed multiple times without uh, basically uh, incorrectness of the uh, state. Um, the use of a unique ID, or does it allow you not no, to it doesn't include that. It's basically, I mean, uh, record the system paper is just discuss possible implementations. Let's uh, further discuss some of the configuration changes, meaning when you're operating a raft cluster, okay, what happens if you want to add more node in the cluster or remove more node? Okay? Raft consider all of these a change of configuration. Okay? And the change of configuration traditionally is tricky. And uh, let me illustrate a situation here. So imagine you have a cluster First, start with three node, and then you add a two node to become a five node cluster. Okay. Now, in the old cluster, which is three, if you get majority that's two out of server S1, S2, and S3, you are getting a majority of the operation, and you can commit that operation, right? <coughs> now. In the new cluster where you have five nodes, if you get three out of the five nodes, all in the entire cluster to agree, okay, you can continue your own operations. If each of the nodes do its configuration change, where the configuration change uh, boundaries we identify as the uh, boundary between the green and the blue regions, okay, so you see the configuration switch timelines. In this particular case, what happens is at these particular time regions, what you find is node S2 and S1. They are operating on the old configuration. Okay? Since they are operating on old configuration, they can form a consensus. For example, uh, S1 can be voted as a leader among the cluster of S1, S2, and S3. Simply because it gets a vote of S1 as S2. That's a majority of the old configuration. While in the bottom, S3, S4, and S5 consists of one majority. They have the majority of the new configurations. Okay? When they operating here, one of the nodes can be elected as a leader. Now you will have two leaders in the same term. You can have all other uh, basic incorrectness in this result of basically uh, things. And this is incorrect configuration change. When you switch configuration, uh, uh, state in the cluster becomes unstable. Okay. Raft basically shows that um, you can do the following to make sure the configuration change survives. So the key here is that for the change of configuration, you, you first do a change to a middle configuration. You say first you change the operation to configuration 3 plus 5. That's operating on the new and old configuration. And the rule in the middle of the configuration is that the quorum, means majority of the node count here, need to be the majority of the both old configuration and the new configuration. So um, that means when you commit, you need to commit to both majority of old configuration, that's S1, S2, and S3, and the configuration of uh, uh, basically uh, um, new configuration, that's three of the node out of five. Okay, recall the major rule is majority of both configurations, okay. not only counting node.
market. That is the important thing. You first switch to this majority, basically new configuration, then you try to switch to the new configurations. And this will correct the issues. So let's see, yeah. I'm not sure if it's a correct part, I understood well. When you say three plus five, what does it mean? It's like eight or? So you're saying upon this time onward, you will need to switch, the cluster need to switch to a, a basically a state which will consider to operating from both configurations. So what I mean is this, okay? So think this command com basically committed into the cluster, okay? This is a command like an ordinary command. Need to commit it, right? And the majority has to accept it, like no. Majority of the three node above and the old node in the Hubert setup. So basically, you cannot have three, four, five, or one, four, five, two, four, five. So you need to have at least two of the, the above node, then three of the total node to accept. So oh. actually, one, two, three is okay. Okay. Because it's a majority on both old and new configurations. Now, when these configurations committed to the old node, they were switched to new configurations. So if they haven't been operating in new configurations, they need to do that. Okay, that's why you see at these boundaries, okay, S2 switched to the new configuration. But assume S1 is the master at this point. So uh, let's say, uh, well, S1, if it's master, it will commit this oh, command, it will right? Be part of this so thing. it will be part of the red. Okay. It has to work for yes. Okay. So I mean, uh, they say this is like an, again basically a NAS situation. So uh, here, I mean, uh, you can say S2 is a leader, or I mean S3 is a leader. This can be either happens. Okay. So, but once S2 learns. This new configuration is going to happen, commits itself, right? At this point of successful commit, it will need to switch to new configuration. Okay, at that point onwards, you see basically you have four of the blue uh, node operating blue configurations. And then you won't have issues. I, think I had one question on yes. the commit part of the things. Now, my assumption is that is like, Single phase. There's no two phases, right? So uh, that's correct. Now, what is possible? Let's assume in this case S two. I mean, I'm not talking about the configuration change. Normal path. Let's say S two was the master, and he replicated a command to S one and S three. S one and S three both received. They locked in the in their commit lock, but they did not. Or the response was not received by S2 and probably S2 died. Uh, S1 or S3, any one of them can become master, but client hasn't got the back of that request is being committed. That's possible, yeah. Well, it's okay. Right? So, and so how is that consistency maintained if the guy tried the same thing? Oh, because of the transaction ID? No, I mean, because here is this, you are saying, okay, you have three nodes, S1, S2, and S3, right? Uh, a command is committed in two of the nodes mm -hmm. among this majority, okay? So no matter what happens later, the leader will always have that command in its own log. Mm -hmm. So in this case, for example, I mean, uh, basically if S2 basically doesn't have the log, crashes, then later when leader election, only S1 or S3 can become the new leader. The guy who doesn't have that command in his commit log will not become a leader. You call it this, okay, so for example, this command is committed to the cluster. Okay, in this case, committed to these three nodes. Recall our previous discussion. New leader from that point on will always has this log in there. Okay, and that is the guarantee you won't have incorrect results. So one more question on this specific thing uh, is the new servers which are coming in, they need to get themselves in sync 
up to the point where S1, S2 or S3 are, right? And to be able to commit the latest configuration change, they need to be at least in sync with the latest thing. So how, how is that specific thing done? So, I mean, the new server can be catching up, right? For example, S3 or S5 can gradually catching up. So uh, the key rule here is that unless they catch up high enough, they won't become a new leader. They won't be able to lead the operation. They can follow. But they cannot even say act because they're still lagging. Behind. They won't act. Only the leader will act. All but command is sent to the leader. Yeah, all command sent to the leader. Only leader acts. A leader needs to replicate, right? Yeah. Now when it 3 became to 5, he needs three guys he, to commit. He has three guys to commit. So for example, um, basically when you move to this command, for example, you say, okay, I will switch to operation of new configurations, okay? He will need three nodes to commit that this configuration change has been committed in the log before it can act to the leader. I think what he's saying needs four and five needs to replicate all the previous logs before they can actually persist the... Before the red state yeah. can be actually done. Yeah, so yes. basically so at, that, that. at that time of commit, you will have this already basically committed. Yeah. Right. All the previous so, law needs to be repaired, right? Yeah. To, so to, to that point. That's potentially a really expensive operation. And the mm -hmm. strategy that you showed a moment ago seems like it would take quite a long time to replicate the log across like that for a uh, server. If, if your uh, basically network is really that crappy, things may not go well. But think about our own data center. Or, I mean, normally things is well, right? I mean, server crash is occasional. And the normal log replication actually is quite streamlined because all the operation is asynchronous. Leader continuously uh, basically uh, uh, get request, right? Do asynchronous calls. So you may have a latency between the log actually get committed, but the throughput is actually very high. So you can basically process a lot of command at very high throughput. Now, so changing from three to five is extreme case, right? So, right, so you don't normally change from three to five, right? I mean, so you can normally basically, go from four to five. In that case, your majority can keep going on. The oh, fifth right, guy can true. just okay. catch up, take time. Right? Configuration change is usually a pretty expensive operation. Yeah. And uh, I mean, basically, I mean, fielding a log of a new node is uh, basically expensive. Well, I presume you don't have to copy the entire log. There's presumably a checkpoint. Yeah. Right. There are certain strategies you can do. Okay. This look at the reverse situation where you step down from five node configuration to three node configuration. And uh, uh, the rule is actually the same. So first you have a middle point. You say you switch to this new combined configuration of five plus three. Be ready to step down. Then you commit a key change says, okay, from that point on, I will only basically operate on a, a three, com three node configuration. Now, this need to again be committed into the majority of uh, both three, three node, S123 and the five node cluster. And uh, assuming S4 is the new old leader, when it commit this configurations, it will not be further operate simply because it's not in the new configuration. So the leader will need to step down at that point. Now that means the upper three node need to start a new round of leader election. In this case, either S2 and S3 can be elected as a leader and continue the operation forward. Yes. So, so I, I guess it should still work. This mechanism should still work even if for the the difference between the old and the new configurations are more than twice, right? Can be, yeah. Three to seven, seven to three. Yeah. You, you can do any jump. Right. The only rule is you need a majority for both old and new. And you can do a, a configuration changes that's non-overlapping. So you have three nodes in one cluster, seven nodes in another cluster. Mm -hmm. You can do this uh, basically jump also. The only thing required is you have this configuration change committed to the majority of both old and new. Okay. 
So I, I think we uh, conclude the description of the raft. We talk that raft, the key implementation is a replicate log for uh, replicate state machines. We see how raft use terms to do operations and to make sure only one leader is elected per term. Leader's log in the uh, raft is the authoritative truth. And the uh, raft makes sure if a command is committed into the cluster, this command will always include in leader's log. And if there's two nodes in the cluster, their log up to a certain point uh, is the same, then all preceding log entries are same. We show how uh, uh, basically raft with configuration changes. Now, if you follow this raft uh, basic lecture, you will see that the raft algorithm does have some subtlety. Basically, there are aspects you need to do uh, uh, carefully to make sure the algorithm is correct. And here is the, basically the point of uh, basically uh, uh, we have PLA plus specifications. And you, uh, uh, well, at least I find PLA plus uh, specification help you to understand this implementation. And the raft TLA spec is also relatively easy to follow. And it's much easier to use it to implement uh, uh, into turn into an actual algorithm. If you recall, uh, 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 later we can look at the uh, raft the TLA spec. Uh, these are the following variables maintained by raft. And among them, two need to be persisted. That's the current term and the log. Yes? If you're persisting current term, don't you need to persist voted for as well? Uh, you don't. So basically, uh, uh, you voted for is who you are voting for. A certain node. Yeah, but that's used to make sure that you don't vote twice. Right? You better persist voted for. Uh, that probably is correct. Yeah. Yeah, I think that probably is where. So yeah, I basically, I think I should change that. Yeah, you, you probably need to persist both for. Would it be sufficient to just buff up the current term on recovery? Mm. But these are the good thing. I mean, we can probably just check for that. Okay. So um, these are the state transitions of uh, 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 the uh, raft. And uh, this slide actually corresponding directly with the TLA plus implementation. You see all the green uh, is actually like subroutine calls in the TLA plus, which deal with network. These are the three state, follower, candidate, and leader. And the purple are state transitions or uh, uh, command within a single node without uh, responding to network. OK, let me uh, show an example. OK, so this is a raft TLA spec. And uh, you can find it in GitHub. Uh, I forked it, uh, made some small changes. Mainly, I, I think basically uh, uh, previously when this spec is written, it's written as a description, but I mean, uh, you also may not actually run through the model checker tools. What we did is try to compress its state so the state space is smaller and the, I mean, the model checker actually can run through it. So uh, if you look at that, these variables are the things which consist the entire state of the machine. So the TLA plus and its model checker, what it did is it, in a sense, expand the entire variable into one state. And the distributed system uh, processing is basically a state space search. You try to explore all possible combinations. And then you try to say, OK, what are the operations that's possible being uh, parallel executed, and uh, if this will get into a bad uh, situations. So um, if you look at the algorithm, basically there's variable which define the state, and uh, these are defining possible transitions. And each is basically one operations I discussed earlier. Now, what this tool allow you to do is dealing with what-if situations. And there, uh, let's use two examples. 
So one which I actually already run, which I think I don't, I'm not going to run again, is basically says, okay, if turn is not persisted, what will be wrong? So this, when you write the algorithms, it will write this way. So this is the original spec where uh, the, how does restart basically uh, uh, logic is written. You see all those uh, things which is not uh, uh, being modified, uh, not persisted, being reset. These values is reset. Okay, interestingly, vote grant doesn't need to be persisted. Okay, here the reason is this vote grant get erased. Okay, but interestingly, we will see, okay, how it's here. Now in this case, I made a, a small change saying, okay, instead of persist the term, okay, the term when the machine restart, we just recover from the log. We, in a sense, we get to the end of the log, use the end of the log's term as the term of the current machines. And uh, then we try to see what's wrong. Okay, we run this uh, thing uh, yesterday, I think after a few minutes of running time, we find uh, uh, this uh, uh, basically uh, uh, the algorithm identifier uh, failure. Okay, that failure case is this. So uh, uh, basically you have a server uh, voted for another server. So let's say you have three server, S1, S2, and S3. Okay, uh, <coughs> S1 send a request to S2 for voting and uh, um, S2 voted for S1, but then crashes. And the wake up again, S2 voted for S3 again. Now you will have two leaders on that term. So that's what the uh, model check will discover. And uh, when it discover, you will find uh, that uh, uh, it will Present these errors in a, a log trace like this. Okay, and there, um, so, so the invariant uh, got violated is uh, more than not more than one leader. More, more than one. Okay, let me show. Uh, actually, I write this invariant because it's not in the original raft spec. In the raft original spec uh, have description of the algorithm, but doesn't have those invariant in there. And the, the TRA plus uh, logic is a way to express things. And uh, um, this is the way you say, okay, not one uh, leader. So you basically check every pair of the server. If they are not the same. You check whether uh, the two servers are on the same term and both are leaders. Okay, this is the environment that you basically says in the, in the whole cluster, it never should happen. And uh, when you check the operation, in a sense, the machine runs through all possible transitions of this case and try to find if there's one case which will hit this point. So yesterday we actually run it uh, using two configurations. One is a random search, which means the machine just randomly, I mean, uh, like uh, your uh, uh, normal, uh, basically distributed application execution, you execute many different times, but each on a different path. We find the one area, I think, with a depth of 45. So something like 45 operations you lead to an error. Then we do a breast first search, which is a default search by the raft to ch uh, check for completeness. That search uh, find this error in 22 minutes. Okay, but the random search actually is fast, much faster, simply because it basically explore and hit these errors. And I will argue, I mean, how to efficiently explore this state phase is an interesting research 
basically a, a point, a, a interesting research problem. Simply because uh, normal in actual uh, thing, when you get to more closer to implementation, like a TLA, like a raft spec, state space is huge. And uh, you can use pixels, which have a smaller space base, but it's, uh, you, you have more work to do when you need to turn that into an implementation. So, so the random search found a longer error trace, right? Yes. The, the breadth first search is much shorter. It's right? much shorter, yes. It took longer to find it. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, uh, basically a case. Now, interestingly, We have a question of whether votes granted uh, need to be uh, persisted, okay? And, uh, Sorry, my, my question was about voted for. Voted for. Which you are persistent. Okay, yeah, you are right. So let's, we, what we can do is we can see if voted for is not persisted, what's wrong, okay? And I think you're, you're, you're probably right that the vote for not persisted, will cause an error. And the way to show it is basically this, okay? So instead of doing that, I'm commenting out this. Now the current term is persisted. But voted for is not. The specific uh, way of writing it is just because of TL plus, uh, uh, basically the way TLA plus written it. And this is just saying, okay, only for server uh, uh, I, you change the state simply because only server I is rebooted. Okay, this says you forget what you vote for. You basically restart with zero, okay? Now you uh, try to run this model checker. Okay. Um, let's use let's use the random to run it. So then it will start exploring. I mean, basically first every node is uh, uh, basically start. And uh, what it, this explored is all scenarios that the cluster can run into. And that's what the uh, uh, TLA plus is designed for. So instead of basically normally in your uh, uh, normal running of the operation, you're exploring I mean, one run of the system the TIA plus is basically exploring all possible transitions of your system that grow into a huge uh, graph of all possible state. And then it's basically expanding this graph, saying, okay, um, what kind of uh, possibility is? And here we are checking, okay, if this vote for not persisted, will it cause problems? Let's explore it for a while. Do you ever want to share the state constraints you did to like trim okay. away the stuff? Let me see. So there is some uh, trick in uh, basically running this model checker you need to use. The main reason of you do this is the entire state space of the uh, algorithm can become too huge to actually uh, realistically run, even on today's powerful machine. Uh, distributed system state grow very quickly. I mean, particularly if you look at uh, uh, basically things here, 
And uh, you need to realize the entire state is basically uh, 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 the state of the algorithm is all possible state of the node, whether they are in candidate, follower, uh, leader position, what's their terms, what's their log entry, or and I mean all these. When all these state together, add it up, and every one change create a new state, you can really have a huge state basically uh, to deal with. Um, we talked to Leslie uh, yesterday. Leslie's suggestion is basically compacting the state. In a sense, he is arguing you should write algorithm like Paxos, where it has a simpler state. Now, uh, uh, this may be nice, but um, it also makes the algorithm far away from implementation. But here is this, I mean, this shows that indeed, if you don't persist voltage four, you are correct. Well, you can violate <laughs> not more than one leader, okay? And uh, uh, this uh, basically, and the state of traces follows is this. But you do you realize, I mean, in implementations, you need to carefully consider this implementation, right? It means if this state is unchanged, you need to persist that. And if you don't persist, well, you wound up with the error. It's a good way to know if we can improve the algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> this clarify what you should do or should not do in the algorithm. And this is a way of showing it. Uh, I think I'm almost out of time. And uh, uh, I hope this gives you a feel of both the raft algorithm and how to use TIA uh, plus as a tool to help you design distributed algorithms. Great, <laughs> If there's an additional question, we can just take offline, right? So, thanks, guys, for coming. Uh, I believe the recording.